All right. So um, sorry I'm not with you today. I had to take care of some things for my uh, my camper today. Um, but we are going to uh, move on uh, with our next unit. Um, and so all of you should have the solving one equation, the distance subtraction uh, note sheet in front of you. Uh, and so what I'm going to do right now is just go through the lesson just like I was in class. And so I want you to take notes just like you were in class, right? So fill in, all right, do the work just like I show you how, all right? Um, and then do the homework like normal, check it, all right? And then when I'm back with you, um, whether Tuesday or Wednesday when I see you, we'll go through any questions you may have um, if the video isn't quite um, clear enough. So, all right, so you can see that our next unit is all gonna be about solving. And I'm really gonna break this down into a lot of like measurable pieces for you, manageable pieces for you. All right, so you may know how to do some of this, and what I show you might be slightly different than what you've learned in the past. So just be open to um, and maybe a new approach, all right, that I may be showing you. There's a reason behind the method, uh, and I'll dive a little bit more into that as we move through the unit, all right? Um, and so it'll hopefully it'll become a little bit more clear to you if it's not clear to you after um, what we do today. So what I want you to do, all right, is go ahead and pause the video and do the opener here. Just answer these uh, four questions real quick. And then turn the video back on and we'll see how you do. All right, so this is one of the properties we talked about in our last unit, right? Um, so the zero property for addition, right? So how do we make something zero? And we always add opposites. So negative eight plus eight would be zero. 10 minus 10 is equal to zero. Five plus negative five would be zero. All right, 12 minus 12 would be zero. So that's going to be one of the big key pieces that we're going to use, all right, when we're solving equations that we're going to get, all right, if anytime we have addition, subtraction, the problem, we're going to get it equal to zero. Because once we know it's equal to zero, we always know what the next value is going to be, all right, because we know to get to zero, they're going to be opposites, all right? And that's really what this slide says here down on the lower left, right? So that additive inverse property of addition, right, which we've already talked about, right? So how do I get zero when I add? I have to add opposites, right? So if I have a positive number, I have to have its opposite as a negative or vice versa. All right, so we're really going to just take that and we're going to use that property two times, all right, in our one-step equations today. So let's go ahead and look at number five here. All right, just moving right along. So notice nine plus X is equal to 12. Now, most of you, a lot of you can probably solve that right now just from common sense like we did in our last unit, all right? So you can probably look at that and say, okay, nine plus what is 12? And you're going to say X equals three. All right, now, that works really well, all right, if you know the math fact. All right, now, what if we don't know the math fact? And this is where getting something equal to zero will help us. Now, this seems a little long for this problem, but hopefully it'll make things a little bit easier, all right, as we move forward. So now, when we look at, all right, this, if I wanted to get this equal to zero, I have a positive 12. So to make that zero, I would subtract 12. Now, probably know this as well. Whenever I do to one side of an equation, I have to do to the other side of the equation to balance that equation. All right, so since I subtracted 12 on the left side, all right, I'm now going to subtract 12 on the right side. Okay, and then notice what I get here. I get 9 minus 12, and so that's negative 3 plus x equals, and then once again, we made that 0. All right, and so notice we get to this problem here, right? So what, okay, negative 3 plus what is 0? And that would be 3, and that gets back into that added, additive inverse property of addition. Now, I know for a lot of what we're doing right now, this seems like a long process, all right? But remember that we're building this for when we get to problems that are going to be a little bit more complicated, all right? So even though you could get right to this, I want to see this getting it equal to zero step for what we're doing right now. So make sure that in all the examples we do in the notes, all right, as well as your homework, all right, you do that for me. All right, so now moving on to number six, all right? So I see I have addition, all right? So I want to get this addition problem equal to zero. So now I look on the right side. How do I get negative two-thirds equal to zero? Right, I add two-thirds, right? That makes that zero. And I'm just gonna bring that equal sign down right there. And I'm making that side zero. Now, once again, I gotta balance the equation. So I need to add two-thirds. And this gets back into that combining like terms, right? So I can only add two-thirds with another number. And what's that number on the left side? That would be three-fourths. So add two-thirds right there, all right? All right. Now, once again, if you know how to add fractions, great. If you don't, well, that's why we have a calculator, right? So you just want to do, all right, three-fourths, right, plus two-thirds on your calculator. All right, and you're going to get about 1.4, all right? So 0 0.75 plus 0 0.66, all right? And you can, if your answer gives, or your calculator gives you an answer as a fraction, great. If it doesn't, all right, go ahead and write it as a decimal. And I'm going to just take 
All right, two decimal places right there. So x plus 1.41. Now here's why the zero property is great because I know, right, even though this is kind of a different kind of number, I know what it has to equal to. It has to equal to its opposite. So this is a positive 1.41. That means x has to be negative 1.41, just like so. All right, now looking at number seven here. So I have another addition problem here. I want to make this equal to zero. And when I look on the right side, I have a positive 7.1. So to make that zero, I'm going to subtract 7.1, all right? Bring down my equal side. I'm making that side zero. Now, once again, I have to subtract 7.1 on the left side to balance this out. So I have to do that with the other number. We're talking about like terms with like terms. And so I get negative 12.8 plus x is equal to zero. Now, once again, right now I have an opposite. Negative 12.8 plus what is zero? Negative 12.8 plus 12.8 is zero. All right, so you can hopefully you're kind of getting this here, right? We're going to always get equal to zero when we have an addition or a subtraction problem. All right, so number eight, once again, some of you might be able to do this and say, okay, what number plus three is negative one? And some of you might be like, oh, well, that's got to be negative four. All right, now if you don't know that fact, right? So we got to have a concrete process. So the concrete process is get it equal to zero. All right, so I'm going to add one. All right, I'm going to make that right side equal to zero. Okay, now. I have to add one with this like term, which would be the three here to balance the equation. And notice I get x plus four is equal to zero. Well, negative four plus four is zero, and that's why x is negative four. So hopefully you're seeing kind of how this flows, all right, in this particular lesson. All right, so let's flip over the page here. All right, now we can skip um, right here. I, I don't know why, I just did not label these very well here, but all right, so we just did this problem, so we can mark that one out. But we're going to jump to our second number six here. So for some reason, I did not label my numbers right, so we have another set of six, seven, and eight here. All right, um, and so looking at six, right, I have an addition problem. I want to make it equal to zero. All right, so I am going to add two to both sides. All right, add two, add two, right? So once again, I made that right side equal to zero. All right, I get x plus 10 is equal to zero. What plus 10 is zero? And that would be negative 10. Okay. Now notice when I get to problem seven here, all right, or second number seven here, notice it doesn't matter which side we get equal to zero. So I'm going to use the one that's maybe a little simpler. So notice in this case, right, it's going to be simpler to make the left side zero, right? I have a positive six here. So to make the left side zero, I'm going to have to subtract six here. And there's my equal sign. Once again, make sure I bring that down. All right, now I have to subtract six from its like term. So that would be negative six with the negative five and I get negative 11 plus X. Well, negative 11 plus what is zero? Negative 11 plus 11 is zero. So there tells me that X is 11. All right, looking at number eight. All right, once again, that left side is what's gonna be easier to get equal to zero. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna do add one to both sides, right? So I'm going to add one to make this left side equal to zero, right? So that's zero. Now to balance it, I've got to add one to the right side with its like term. So right there. And notice I get x plus four is equal to zero. All right. And what plus four is zero? That would be negative four. All right. So hopefully you're kind of seeing that all right, over and over again, right? So we're really using the zero property twice, right? We're using it to get it equal to zero, and then we're using it to figure out what does it have to be to be equal to zero. All right, now, notice it does not change with subtraction. So when we look at our upper right-hand side here in our notes, right? Now I have a subtraction problem. Well, it doesn't matter. If I have an addition problem or a subtraction problem, I'm going to get it equal to zero. All right, I'm gonna start by subtracting two here. So subtract two, subtract two. All right, and then that's going to make the right side equal to zero. 13 minus two is 11, so I have 11, and then minus x. Well, 11 minus what is zero? 11 minus 11 is zero. So that means x has to be 11. 11 minus 11 is zero. All right, and that's all it is. All right, doesn't matter if I have a decimal. So like now we look at number 10 here, right? All right, I'm gonna add 10.3 to both sides. Make it equal to zero, right? I'm going to add 10.3 over here, right? Okay, all right. And so when I do that on my calculator, just to verify here, right? So I have um, negative 7, 7.4 negative plus 10.3. All right, I get 2.9. Okay, 
Okay, so 2.9 minus x is equal to 0. And then once again, 2.9 minus 2.9 is 0. So I know 2.9 is my x. All right, so hopefully you're seeing this again, right? Same process. Get it equal to 0. Get it equal to 0. And then what makes it 0? All right, 11. Now, once again, notice we have a subtraction problem. I want to get it equal to 0. And the side that's easier to get equal to 0 is this left side here. So I'm going to add 8. I'm going to make that left side equal to 0. Now I have to add 8 to the right side, okay, to, with a slight term. And notice what happens here. Now it turns into an addition problem because I get x plus 4 once I combine like terms. Negative 4 plus 8 is positive 4. All right, now what plus 4 is 0? That would be negative 4. All right, so when we combine like terms, it might turn into an addition problem. It might turn into subtraction, but probably may stay the same. All right, so that's why we just want to interpret what result we have. All right, looking at 12, once again, all right, much easier to get that left side equal to zero. So I'm going to add one, all right, and just notice I'm looking for its like term. So I made the left side equal to zero, all right, oops, put my equal sign there. I'll make that zero a little bit bigger there. And I'm looking for its like term and make sure a number goes with a number. So don't always put it with the right or the left, right? So I added eight on the right side but because that's where the like term was. So I'm always looking for that like term. All right, and so now I get 8 plus 1, which is 9. So 9 minus x is equal to 0. 9 minus 9 is 0, so that means x is 9. All right, one more small thing to clear up. All right, and then this lesson is finished, and you'll get to move on to the homework. All right, so now when we look at problems with double signs, all right, and we talked about this a little bit before. Like, we typically want to simplify double signs before we begin a problem, just so we know exactly, okay, is it an addition problem? Is it a subtraction problem? And then what do I have to get to get to zero? All right, so notice here, I have a negative negative. So before I start this problem, I'd go back and think about my rules. A negative times a negative is a positive. So I would rewrite this as x plus 6 equals 5. All right, and now I would go through my process. Now, how do I get it equal to zero? All right, I'm going to look at the right side, and I'm going to subtract 5 to get it equal to 0. And then I'm going to subtract 5 on the left side with its like term. I get x plus 1 is equal to 0, and then that means x has to be negative 1. All right, looking at this one, right, I have a positive negative here right next to each other. We know from our multiplication rules a positive times a negative is a negative. So I would rewrite this as x minus 5 is equal to 10. And once I have that double sign taken care of, now it's just like we talked before. Okay, I have an addition or subtraction problem, get it equal to zero. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 10 from the right side, right? Make that right side equal to zero. I'm going to subtract 10 from its like term on the left side, which would be the negative 5. And I get x minus 15 is equal to zero. All right, and then that means 15 minus 15 is zero. So x is, has to be 15. All right, so just whenever we have those double signs, just Right, one additional step to clean it up, make sure we know exactly what we see. All right, let's look at our last four example problems here. So looking at 13, notice right away I see a double sign. So let's take care of that. A positive times a negative is a negative. All right, now I know for sure I have a subtraction problem. I'm going to get it equal to zero. The easiest side to get equal to zero is that right side. So I'm going to subtract 12, and that's going to make it equal to zero. And then I'm going to subtract 12 from the 3. All right, or the negative 3, I should say. All right, those are like terms. So I get x minus 15 is equal to 0. All right, so x minus 15 is 0. 15 minus 15 is 0. So that means x has to be 15. All right, 14. All right, once again, hopefully what stands out to you is that we have that double sign. So a negative, negative here. And we know a negative times a negative becomes a positive. So I get x plus 4 is equal to 9. Now, once again, I'm going to make it equal to 0. All right, the easiest side there is that right side. So I'm going to subtract 9, make that right side 0. I'm going to subtract 9, all right, from its like term, which is the 4. And I get x minus 5 is equal to 0. What minus 5 is 0? That would be 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So that tells me what x has to be. All right, down to the last two. You guys are almost there. All right, and then hopefully you have a good amount of time to um, work on the homework and finish the homework. All right, so now... All right, looking at the right side here, or, or excuse me, the, or, yes, our right side here, we see the double sign again, a positive negative. So I'm going to simplify that, right? So a positive negative, all right, becomes x minus 4. And then once again, I want to get it equal to 0. The easier side to get equal to 0 is the left side, so I'm going to subtract 1 from the left side, and I'm going to subtract 1 from 
this like term on the right side, which is that negative 4. And notice this turns into the same problem we just did, x minus 5. All right, so we already know 5 minus 5 is 0, so there's our answer for x. All right. And we'll wrap up one here with, um, all right, that big F-bomb in math, the fractions. All right, here we go. But notice before we get to the fractions, we got to take care of our double signs here. All right, so a negative negative becomes a positive. So I have one-fourth equals X plus four-fifths. All right, I'm going to make it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract one-fourth, right, on that left side, because that's the easier side to get equal to zero, minus one-fourth. All right, so x, and then once again, no big deal, right? If you don't know, all right, how to add or subtract fractions, we'll just use our calculator, right? So I'm going to do that right now. So 4 fifths, all right, minus, all right, 1 fourth, all right, and I get 0.55, all right, so plus 0.55. And then once again, x plus 0.55 is 0. So I have to have its opposite, so that means x has to be negative 0.55. All right, so that wraps up, all right, our lesson on, all right, solving one-step equations. Now, what you should do now, right, so you're going to get a worksheet for homework, right? You should do that worksheet. You complete it. Now, once again, you should also get your assignment sheet. Now, once again, a very big part of this class, right, is that after you do the homework, you need to get into Schoology, which is where this video is, so you should already be in Schoology. All right, once you finish the, uh, the, um, the homework, open the answer key, check every problem, right? Use a highlighter, right? Check, circle, right? Check if it's correct, circle the number if it's wrong, right? Put your score in your assignment sheet, and then, all right, try to fix anything that you did not get right the first time, okay? And then I will see you guys next time in class. All right, take care.